All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Brewing with Birch and Bromley. Uh, we took a little week off there because uh, Bromley did an excellent job recording a million videos and dropping them all uh, last week anyway. So a little bit of an overload of content there would have been, you know, bad for your guys' brains. You think it wouldn't and, be good, uh, dude? What? You don't think it would have been good? You think people would have been oversaturated? I, I think people would have been a little overstimulated. Um, <laughs> So we are a little bit removed from the uh, TKE TTST uh, for the lame and that's the Tim Keefe Experimental TTS tournament that happened a couple weeks ago that Mark Tyner uh, won again because he's Mark Tyner. I mean, that guy's fucking nuts. He just yeah. wins everything he enters, I guess, at this point. Um, yeah, I guess so. But yeah, uh, it was a very successful event uh, in terms of players showing up. There was 59 players, I believe, which is nuts. Uh especially for like an online event that's that's a very very big event uh to be able to gather people um just in one you know internet space you know not a lot of spacing out to do and stuff like that like there's tons of things you could do on a, in a day and 60 people basically showed up for that event um which we contributed a lot to the much 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 better advertising that that event had uh compared to pretty much any jasco games event yeah, so yeah. that was that was that was something there. Um, I don't know if you had anything to add about the the event itself. I mean, we could definitely talk about Mark Tyner winning. Uh, I would love to talk about maybe just the state of UFS as a whole, based on the bubble of that event. Um, I saw some things that I thought were were very telling, uh, but I don't really think that uh, we need to sit here and talk about how good Mark Tyner is and uh, really suck his dick anymore because I think we've done that on every single episode after he has won an event. Yeah, he's an own quantity at this point. Yeah, that dude's nuts. That guy's nuts. He's very good. And a sack. But, Everybody's and seen a sack. It now. It's really Absolutely, important. dude. Uh... <laughs> I very, very, uh, very eloquently claimed that uh, I could kill a man on turn one, but there was no way that I could kill the god of sack on turn one. Uh, <laughs> I said that to him as he was beating me in the tournament itself. That's funny. Yeah, uh, it was, uh, like I said, it was a good event, though. It was fun. Um, we, uh, everybody had on fun stuff, submitted our, our decks for people to watch. Uh, to see see what our own processes were so we don't really need to go into like our own decks or anything either it's just it was a fun event and honestly m i heard i've heard mixed reviews on the the two extra card things um right but i think overall people liked the idea that second player got to at least have some cards for defense and i yeah. think that's that's kind of the telling thing of it yeah i think the cards for defense was the was the the big factor right like there were some things that were a little bit fucky um i certainly didn't like playing in the kotal khan who tuned his deck just to attack me on turn one going second um and i know there were like jackie's doing that um i know that there were uh squirrel decks that were just like trying to stuff reverberate onto every single game uh so there were some like some cheesy things but I think overall it was a it was a plus, uh, and I talked about it on my on my like video that I think it's it's probably best to just if you're gonna do something like this you ban turn one attacking going just in general just stop it people attacking. Um, I know that you didn't like that because your deck was Which attacking I on hate. turn one. Yeah, you I love attacking, attacking on turn one. In turn one. Yeah, uh, um, but I don't. I just don't think it's healthy. It you know and 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 so the the counterpoint to this is that attacking as the first player on your second like your second turn is is just as bad as you know the second player attacking on their first sure. turn right um but i think there's some big distinctions there uh you don't have your character going first right into that into that first second player's turn and um uh it, it it's less of a gamble <clears throat> most of the time uh you know you, like you maybe you're like there's some people who are chucking like a four diff or a three diff and they're playing safety threes and so like that's a guaranteed sort of poke sure. but that, that's not what what ends up being the problem the problem is when people are playing these uh card pool clearing characters characters that can just dump stats onto things 
characters that can guaranteed make the checks, like Tim Keefe. Like, your deck wouldn't attack going first unless it had the plus two to the checks and things like that. You know, reduction into into five diff is, is I can check a three and still pass this, sort of. Um, so, um, uh, I didn't, I didn't like that part of the, the format. Um, uh, I also think that seven handers maybe got a little bit too much out of the bargain going second. I, um, I also agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I guess the, the, like the, the knee jerk solution to that, because five handers definitely showed up, right? Jose and I were both playing five handers and did really well. We were one and two. Five handers. This guy's Yoshi Mitsu. Five handers. He says he's a five hander. He's a five hander uh -huh. going first. He's a five hander going first. <laughs> going first, he sure is. <laughs> going first, he's an actual five hander. Um, and I went first a lot of that day. Uh, just saying. Except against Kotal Khan. Except against Kotal Khan, who I forced him to go first because <laughs> uh, I knew exactly what was about to happen. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, because I was I was top seed, so I chose to go first. I mean, that's sure. That's that's just. I mean, like you still choose to go first, even even yeah, this yes. character is so nuts and has eleven cards. But I think sure. that you could you could do the Jackie Briggs sort of thing, where it's like you everybody draws up to eight on their, uh, you know, going second. I had an um an interesting idea that uh, honestly kind of just popped into me because I felt like a lot of the more egregious offenders for this like, um second turn play style we're using it as an advantage to get like the two extra cards right like right mm -hmm. away see him there um there's a world where you could instead of allowing them to get those cards at the start of their turn they get them at the end of their first turn right so like you'd still be a six hand size on your build but you get an extra two for defense i'm okay? saying so like you still have cards to defend with you're still allowed to play out your hand to try and match pace with turn player like play, first player but you will have two extra cards on defense and I know that is, it is worse because obviously those two cards could both have no blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that it encourages a little bit more of a less, I guess, uh, play every single card in your hand play style where, where some of these people were really getting away with just building out a million cards. Right. Like, not every deck can punish that. So, like, if you're giving second player say like a nine hand size like we were discussing with with seven hand sizes which it could which was a problem like that is very good mm -hmm. um like that 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 can become very obscene when people can still build their decks to play out like almost eight cards honestly on turn one like you could still play like just a slew of cards like and it wouldn't even be that like absurd to even like think about because you can just build a bunch of spams into your deck, a bunch of like sense of morals type cards, stuff like that, where you right. that just the, get even more of an advantage. That was the problem with like the all Goro in retro, where he just played a thousand cantrip foundations and non blogs, sure. where he's like breakfast and morning lost and sense of morals and every cheap <coughs> foundation. So he got like five and six builds while attacking you on one kind of thing. Um, right. So. I can see, I can see that, you know, uh, I, the only times I built seven during the tournament were when I drove like double sense of morals or something like that. Sure. I know that, uh, I played into one of the Raptors I played had, had a bunch of over the tops to try to take advantage of that turn one build. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely a thing. Uh, the, the, the biggest problem I see with drawing two after the fact is you don't get to sculpt for the block, right? Right. Right. Which is which is sort of the intent, right? Like you could be a greed monster and try to build seven, um, and as a seven hander, you you know you hold two at that point, but you still got the sculpt for the block, right? You they're yeah. they're if they're intelligent and thinking about the block, then that's the that's the benefit to it. Um, uh, so I, I do think I do think you know like one extra card for seven hander is relevant. Uh, two extra cards for a six hander super relevant. I mean there were like I know that six handers didn't really show up, but I think that's not because six handers are terrible and uh oh, they don't really get anything sure. out of this. It's just, you know, like there were a bunch in the bubble, right? I mean that Fay that beat you was on the bubble. Um yeah. the Codal was on the bubble. Uh there was just a fuckload of them on the bubble. Um and just because five handers like it was it was like unfair five handers, right? It was cool Sure. Barra I mean they were they were if if you're gonna say five handers, they were the best two five hand size characters in the format. Right. Like yeah. it's not like it was 
when hanging out though i love when it wasn't like when hanging out and like jackie briggs hanging out near the top it was literally the best two five hand size characters in yeah the format. and piloted by two players that have been playing and, those characters for literally a year you know piloted by the boys <laughs> by the boys i was the only scrub in unfun stuff who did not show up in top cuts but my strength to schedule was the highest in the tournament yeah, it was the I'm highest. Just ba- i am just not good enough to win when it matters with yeah. my meme deck <laughs> You're very close. I mean, and, and, and you were playing a five-hander. That was the problem, dude. That was yeah, problem. I should have played uh, the third most broken five-hander, which is... Oh, I could have just played your Yoshimitsu deck card for card. I forgot there was no diversity you in this. You could have. I, 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 I should have you... just taken one of your guys' <laughs> decks and played it card for card, but I, I really wanted to meme on people. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, Once I killed you turn one on testing, it was all over. That was the only deck I could play. Oh, uh, okay. I see. I see. <laughs> that thing I hate. We hate that. Yes, yes, yes. That thing you hate. And the thing that Sam Tate probably hates after I killed him turn one. But he still got second and I didn't make top cuts. So. True. That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. But I think the format was a success. I think that it really showed how kind of untested these um these Holiday Foundation and attacks were. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, those cards are crazy. Like, metaforming, right? I have a slightly different i i wouldn't say like a hot take mm-hmm. um i think with with changes to to how attacking works and with like a certain like with differences in the format like tim keep obviously being a super big outlier i don't know how good the attack is in most other characters jackie briggs uh, is insane with that yeah well, well jackie briggs jackie yeah. briggs can make it a billion bajillion damage right yeah. but like uh it, it feel it felt like the greatest card in the world because it cleared itself, right? right? And it felt super good on turn one. But every time I had it after turn one, it it was just a seven speed attack, which is good, is good, right? With Don't get me wrong. Three? With but it, 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 I mean, it's a seven speed attack that <laughs> most of the times letting your opponent draw cards because uh, unless your opponent is not smart enough to pay attention to what your attack lineup is, which right. happens, right? Mm-hmm. They're never gonna like build like stack their momentum. They're just sure. gonna allow themselves to to draw an extra card and you untap one of their cards if they if they have you choose right so you're gonna untap their face downs probably but you're really giving them an extra card and you have like a six speed attack at that point which is still good yeah it's still good i i I think it is very good in jackie briggs because she can make it actually a threat yeah Uh, i think it's very good in tim keith because he can play it on turn one for literally no cost because it clears itself mm-hmm. uh i don't know how much outside of that it's like super good that foundation though is nuts mm-hmm. that foundation though is insane like that is like snap momentum is is usually uh like it usually like in, in, in modern ufs has a higher cost like hunters once more you had to have another hunters once more on the board right and that was the the one five uh senko foundation yeah i well there was so, so... It would be another story if it was an actual do nothing card on the board, but it's kind of like sure. it's almost morning. In terms oh, of it's the damage super it good on the yeah. board too. Yeah, yeah if I if I had things. that in many instances, it would have been super good. Like, yeah, because people do hold momentum now. Like, yeah, yeah, and and um, like you flip for four plus damage a lot of the time. Play ball committed. Um, yeah, it's just a it's very, got a lot. It's a very very good card. Um, and they, the biggest problem that I have with it is that it it's best in <clears throat> in in decks that had no business playing the card normally like mad puro um uh kung Jin, right sure Bia- biako is running the card just because you know uh yeah like like the intent i think is kind of like this bakugo thing where it's characters who can destroy it for 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 stats but it's what's really happening is people are just trying to high roll by playing a bunch of cards like soul of the sword and yeah, you just characters mill that mill and you're just like oh i'll hit it dude i'll hit it yeah I'm gonna i mean off, cards that i'm going off, to hit it off symbol it's literally is just like off symbol momentum generation for these yeah. for these decks that typically needed a little bit more like fire shouldn't be able to just get snap momentum that's not fire's thing but yeah. because of the nature of how they redesigned a card that was literally broken yeah. for infinite loops into something that is still broken, it just doesn't have an infinite loop. Like, yeah. The, I would have I, liked. I, I would have liked for it to be like after it's destroyed or have a destroy in hand, so you have to choose between the flipper and the destroy. But I think it. I think it's just it. It was not tested thoroughly enough. Sure. Um, 
and we just got to deal with it in standard. I mean, like, it's far from the most broken thing in standard, and a lot of sure. it, it's popular because it's new, and, yeah. like, there's a lot of cool things you can do with it right now. You know, there's a lot of water decks using Reverberate with it. You know, there were uh, the Cutman and the Spike both doing that thing, sure. right? Um, so I think it, part of it is that it's, you know, it's the flavor of the month. Um, it's definitely it's, not uncounterable, yeah. right? And it's not uninteractable right. or anything like that. Like, momentum is is m- momentum, and there's been characters for a very long time that just yeet momentum all the time, right? Sure. I've been I mean, it's it's certainly no <laughs> different than having Faye just get free momentum on every attack, right? Yeah, right, right. It is, it is as you said, it's super knee-jerk, probably just because it, mm-hmm. it is new. So a lot of people wanted to try it because this was the first yeah, tournament yeah, with it. Yeah, it, 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 it definitely has, like, like it show, show, showed up a bunch in the tournament because it is sort of like, it's a new card. People want to play with this new card. Yeah. Um, and they're they're testing pretty exclusively with that, and so of course they're going to play the things that they're they're testing with. So um, like I, I I'm not going to say it needs to be banned or like that. I just would have liked to it like to to see it have been tested a little more thoroughly. You know, to to be a sure. little bit more fair, um, as opposed to this weird high rolly thing. And you know, right. like that's that's fine. It, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, yeah. I think the the attack is just like it's it's a good card, right? Uh, yeah, ironic that it didn't have void. <laughs> it should um, add void. Give yeah. void a good card, please. It, one time, um, but and neither did the the squirrel one either. Um, but it, you know, the, the the intent I think was to give three symbols that were underplayed some tools. Um, but it looks like they didn't see the resurgence of water over the past like eight to ten months. Yeah, um, it it does seem like a little bit of a miss there because. Yeah. Maybe it's still not played to the extent that like it should be, but like uh, the the water reverberate decks are are very good, right? Like oh, the spikes nuts, yeah. and and the cut man and stuff, where these decks are able to play a very solid defense, and then they they have a kill condition now because reverberate is such a powerful card like that, where yeah. where um maybe they used to have to struggle a little bit more. Um, they they are capable of just being like okay I got to stack two momentum through these other cards and now I blow you up and now with the now with the squirrel card they don't even have to stack the momentum right yeah, you just have yeah. to have them in play uh in some regard or like check them or you know any of your flip various it, generous gambler flip it, cut yeah, man flip it. whatever you know just flip it generous gambler see Salika response boom oh yeah see Salika yeah. flip it destroy it with generous gambler respond with it there's two momentum there's easy two momentum. game yeah oh shocking yeah, shocking it's pretty good it's pretty good in those water decks uh i think those are like i mean i've been playing those decks for like 10 months you know i was i was yeah, playing yeah. water spike I've, I've been saying is, is the better one even even before this thing was uh was revealed uh i played king uh i played kuabara you know we played cool we played karama um interesting note is that karama can reversal with the reverberate um and karama and a lot of these these decks which are really just reversal decks even back then they were reversal decks where you're just playing precise blows uh bamboo blind slices and things like that um now they have like a kill condition on their own turn right with the reverberate uh uh spike makes this thing right just on his face Plus the dam- the destroy hands, no gamblers or anything like that. It's just like um, three seven mid for eight, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So so like that's that's a lot. Um. It's it's definitely uh, uh definitely big 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 numbers. Um. And and reverberate has sort of been like creeping up because uh, this card just pushes it over the edge because now you have yeah. you know we had we were playing you know moonset and see Salika and like at four of because we wanted to hit reverberate on that turn two and just like blow somebody out um but now you just have another card you can 4x that really gets you sure. closer to that turn two dream where you're like you go first you build five second turn you see Salika flip something uh destroy it with gambler plus four speed because you responded with see Salika, um destroy another one for the three yeah. damage and, and then like you end up with zero foundation but it doesn't matter because they're dead you don't yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if they're dead yeah. your 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 foundation count does not matter if your opponent is deceased yeah so it's, that's it's very good that's pretty good that's pretty good um and but that's cool i mean i like that water decks get to get to see some play um it's it's kind of it's kind of sad that they're all playing the exact same attack lineup um with similar sort of uh, conditions, but that, that's the, you know that's the name of the game. It's not like all oh, order decks are all playing Moonset and and uh, yeah. Forbidden or, or, or Meteor, right? And it's like well, I'm not sad about that. Like orders is good because they have those two cards. Yeah, so. yeah. I I I'm not upset about it either. I I kind of I kind of enjoy that type of uh, scenario that occurs. I know it's mm-hmm. not everybody's cup of tea when when decks get 
kind of roped into their own little like strategies but right. also I, I think ufs or universes now expands on that a lot by um allowing you to mix and match that with different characters i, I think that right. that's probably the most yeah, fun part about it for me it's a it's a lot like a toolbox right like i, I can sure. i can see somebody like like a like it's something I would have done, um, where you just like maybe you have Spike on top, and then you adapt to the situation as necessary. Like you have Cut Man for certain things. Sure. Like if you really need to block things very easily and go late game, you have like uh, uh, Talum if you want to really go deep on these multiple you know shenanigans. You have uh, 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 Kuabara if you want to not die. Uh, there's a lot of these water characters that use this package really effectively. And now that we have a ten card sideboard, you know, yeah. Um, you can maybe side into these characters a little bit more efficiently. Um, so that's cool. That's neat. I like toolbox decks that can use the same sort of attack lineup. Um, uh, I, yeah. I wish that some of these decks would be running things like Deep Freeze. Um, I think that's a really undervalued card, especially since most of these characters are packing speed onto things, right? Sure, um, sure. Uh, you you know, can, yes, like yeah. getting rid of like Snap. getting rid of three copies of Bakery Poster Girl is nothing, or yeah. what is it, Seal 2? Seal 3. Seal 2 Seal three things and increases stun rating to three. I thought it was seal two and then it becomes stun three. Maybe it's seal two. Let me let me look. I it think up. it's seal two and it becomes stun three. But like sealing even two bakery poster girls and then being able to stun three afterwards is so valuable against these earth decks that can just sit on their defense. Right. Which is, I mean, earth is probably the best symbol in the game, right? Like, I know there's a lot of like merit to it not being the most aggressive, and it's 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 a very boring symbol, but it is probably the best symbol in the game it does it does a lot of the things you need to survive while still having a very good offensive strategy which is just fucking throw people <laughs> <laughs> just like you throw people throws always do damage guys like throws are nuts Throws have always been a linchpin offense in the game in, in some regard because like you you can't fully stop them you right. have to pack answers to stop them completely and like Cards like Owl Shield allowing you to throw stats on these throws is 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 really bringing fucking well Owl Shield and you got Kula Test so, so your opponent can't go to deadlock and it's it's nuts. I you know there were five Cassandras right and this is a tournament without yeah. diversity so none of these Cassandras got diversified. Um, sure. And there were a ton of them playing I think very similar lineups. I think the only difference Mark really had from the other ones is that he was playing like Dreaming of Becoming Whole and uh the stunner right which i sent him two days before the event a picture of that card i think this i think the stunner yeah. was the most insane card in that deck actually yeah i, I actually I, and that's really funny because he wasn't running it before like uh sure. five days before the event we played a test game um and uh and he didn't like the deck he was like this is like the attack lineup is taking too many like it, it's taking too long for me to kill people because like, i've got all these five days he was running like flight of the wicked and i really didn't like that um yeah uh, like it's big, but you already have vicious madness if you want a really big throw. And so, all your soul is the best card in the deck, right? Yeah. Um. And and like and then he was like he was he, and then he got on this Yusuke kick. You want to play this Yusuke deck that checked it? It checked only sixes. And if he drew the nuts, he killed anything. But like it's Yusuke. Like, <laughs> I mean, like, he can do that without yeah, he had playing zero, a mean deck. Yeah, yeah, he had zero defense. Um. Uh. And he was just trying to like dragon's tongue and do. It was a really funny deck. But I like. I think we played like one game. I played Gren into it. And and he, it it just didn't go well. So he was like, I don't know what I'm gonna play. Um, and the day after that, I sent him, uh, I sent him just like a UFS Ultra Link to that Stunner card. And and he he just sent me a thumbs up emote back. And then like Friday at like probably 7 p.m. he was like, Hey man, can you put this deck together on TTS? Cause I'm at work. And I was like, "Did you submit the list to Rochester?" And he's like, yeah, "Yeah, I did it, I did it." But he, but like, I saw he had like a notebook that he was he literally wrote it down at work, so he like didn't have his cards around. He just did it from his brain. Nice. And he, he forex the the tombstone. I think it's called tombstone stunner. Tombstone um, stunner. Yep. Tombstone yeah. Stunner. And and like so that's the biggest thing that that deck had over some of the other Cassandras, but they're all running very similar things, right? Tombstone is actually not very like chunky. It's for seven, um, uh, but it really plays into your your throw plan, right? It makes your your vicious sure. bandits a three three difficulty. It makes your swallow your soul a lot easier to play, um, and it and like but like you can be a little like it's not running nutcrackers, it's not running missile launchers. Um, it was just consistent like grindy play style, and and like yeah. But that's what Cassandra has done since Shielded Bang was banned. So I don't think it's that 
oh, Tombstone is just the craziest card ever, right? Or like, oh no, um, absolutely you know, not. It's it's like 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 none of the other Cassandras showed up. Um, you know, Tyner just played really really well. Yeah. Um, he he and he you know he saw the cards he needed to when he needed to see them. Um, and and like that's part of the thing. Like Sam Tate has this great quote where he says, "You can't win an event without sacking." Right? It doesn't matter who you are. You have to sack to sure. win an event. You have to run hot. Yeah. You have to run hot. Um, and and like like Tyner just has like really great, uh, great gameplay. Right. All the time he's making really sweet plays. I think that he's you know, like very few times have I watched Tyner and been like, I don't know why he's doing that or like or right. like. You know, you know, a commentary I very rarely hear that as well. I know when I do, it's because like, like, oh, why didn't he use Owl Shield? Well, it's because he emergency rationed it or something like that. Like, there's sure, it's it's of, stuff that typically yeah. cannot be seen. Exactly, yeah, yeah. It's it's there's there's explanations because there's for why. no like, yeah, he, yeah. There's he no plays, there's no verbalization. He plays very safe. Um, he he plays uh very smart. Um, and a deck like Cassandra rewards that right, where he's sure. not he's not taking like bonkers plays. Um, and and like. He had to beat a Raptor to do that, and and like personally, yeah, I can't beat Raptor playing as Cassandra. It's impossible for me, um, just because all of her block modifiers are so bad on the attacks, right? Sure. You basically, just have Owl Shield, and that's it. So the fact that he was able to to like smoke the Raptor, right? Um, yeah. It, it's like that's not Cassandra, because I think that that's a bad matchup for her. That's Mark Tyner playing well and drawing well, and and you know. So I, I don't think it's Cassandra that's oh it's a problem like I know you really hate Owl Shield but oh that card's fucking broken <laughs> it's definitely just it's definitely the another passive tier. just sure. the, passive. the passive yeah the passive part I do not give a good. fuck about the other two effects I think it's static for a one diff is too good yeah um uh but but I think that a, a large chunk of of it is just it's just Mark I mean it's just he's he's a very oh very absolutely good player, you know? absolutely I. I mean, yes, they the, the 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 five Cassandra players all were playing very similar lists and stuff. But I think it is uh, very telling to adapt from a situation where you're going in as Nutcracker being an incredible card, right? Where it's mm-hmm. always doing eight, and going this is not doing anything anymore as right. as as well, right? This becomes pretty much a plus one card, like you're drawing a card, right? Yeah. I think adapting that, taking that, and going, hey, we can make our offense better by taking rid of this card that doesn't do anything now. Is great adaptation, right? You're yeah. you're taking out a card that's just Breaker Two, and changing it over. And I don't think a lot of the other decks did that, despite us talking about it, right? Sure. Because we we, I joked around with Mike Lowe and said, "Hey man, put Spinning Bird Kick in your deck because I think it'll be funny." Like, and I I, I don't think Spinning Bird Kick's dog shit, right? I think it's no, way it's... worse than Stunner, mm-hmm. but it does come in for big stats, it's especially a big one. Like Sandra. Same with like Kikosho, it's like Sandra, right? Yeah, it, it comes in big stats with like or like Kikosho, right? Yeah. But we were already talking about like if you're adapting and taking out this card that got worse in this format, right? Like it mm-hmm. got worse. Nutcracker isn't as good. Yeah. It's it's not even probably worth the, the $40 it still is or a million dollars it still is on the internet. Mm. It's not that good anymore. And just going, all right, well, what if I play slower? Don't worry about it. And just grind people out. Throws are good. Throws mm-hmm. are good. Mark is incredible. And Mark is very methodical, right? Mm-hmm. Like Mark can play defense. So if you can play defense and you are always doing damage, your your opponent's gonna lose eventually. Yeah. Like, and I, I think that sacking happens from time to time for Mark, and I think it, he makes it look a little bit more showy because it's always it always seems like he has it at the most opportune moment. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that like that's a very very small percentage of that guy's game at this point. Sure. Yeah. Like yeah, at yeah. at this point, like everybody has to get lucky to win. Like in some regard, that's why we don't see fire decks ever do well because fire is a shitty symbol, and mm-hmm. you have to high roll the mm-hmm. whole event the whole time. But, like, I think, not to discount Mark, uh, but, like, he played, the, in my opinion, the best symbol. I wouldn't say maybe necessarily the best character. Like, I think that there might be a better character, but I think that that symbol is just so incredible. Like, Lilith is probably better in some regards. But that symbol is so good at just not dying through, be it speed hate or any of its various other control pieces because it like it does a good job of controlling your opponent's foundations sure uh your opponent cannot go into deadlock against earth because of cards like uh second saintly beast or kulet uh kuletus giving your attacks just six extra damage yeah uh overly dramatic like it your opponent has to sit on 10 or less foundations or else you just get to wash them mm-hmm. and like that can't be discounted in a situation where generally it doesn't matter to you if you go into deadlock because you have answers 
Like, you could play a million cards, but it doesn't matter because you, you play main deck Servant of Ares, you play main deck Glutz, where you could still flip over their deadlock pieces before it truly matters. Right. Uh, it's just a good symbol at controlling your opponent's tempo uh, at, like, an incredible pace. Mm -hmm. Like, if your opponent doesn't kill... If you don't kill Earth decks early and you don't have, a like, a super, super efficient late game, you probably aren't winning. You have to have, like, a late game in some regard. Right. Like, I know if I got... When I got past, like, turn three against Mark, I was like, oh, God, this is the most uphill battle of all time. Mm -hmm. I think I won game one somehow through that, uh, but I promptly got into the same situation two and three and got washed in both of them. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's tough. It's it's tough. Earth is... I'm not saying, like, Earth is broken or anything. It's just, like, the way the game is played now, Earth responds to it very, very well. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, right now, blocking is like the best thing ever, right? It's the best thing in the world. Uh, you think of you think of <laughs> um, you think of like like how broken Reverberate is, or like how crazy you know people are still playing missile launchers. They're still playing you know burst time. They're playing all these things like big fat strings. If you can block three t three attacks a turn, your opponent can't kill you, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. It, you know, uh, some of the throw decks have gone down in in like the ranks of play. You don't see very many like shotgun decks. You don't see very many um, sure. Uh, 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 and the vicious madness spam decks. I mean, like there's nightmare, of course. Uh, but sure. Cassandra does well into those decks uh, because she, like, she, she angel can, She can block several things, and then she also has throw hate. You know, so she's yeah. she's well positioned for whatever the uh, format throws at her so i mean and not it, not only throw hate it's reusable throw hate because you get to attack with it every single turn if you right. have an asset out yeah then your opponent has to answer a six speed six damage attack every single turn yeah yeah it's it's angel disc is so crazy for her uh, i remember uh, jose was like why is this card has it or we were comparing it to barrier frost and he was like well it has a worse block mod than barrier frost and i was like well in in the case of angel disc it's it's a it's a boon right because yeah. it's now instead of being a five mid five, it's a six mid six three diff, right? Yeah, it's, like, wow, it's, it's better because its block is worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and it doesn't matter that its block is terrible because he has so many pieces of speed get, hate. Yeah, right? speed hate or or block modifier reduction on the asset. No prog no progressive on your blocks because of the fucking asset. Yeah, fucking asset. Uh, I hate that card so we had damn but yeah, it's mean, okay though. Speaking of those water decks, a lot of them are playing Yin and Yang, and Yin and Yang sure doesn't work into Owl Shield. No. Never works. You cannot do anything. <laughs> but but the big thing here is I watched the top cuts, I looked at all the top cuts decks, yeah. and there was I was the only deck running main board asset hate. Like Are you like really? Yeah. Like, well Tyner would have had Ominous Prophecy. He had right? Ominous Prophecy, but I think it was more on the board. Like like I had okay. three main hacker extraordinaire because that card, yeah, yeah, like assets, assets are, are fucking broken, crazy, you know. Um, and even when I was playing a water, when I was playing king, right, I had two main answers for owl shield, and I had yeah. three more on the side, right. And it was yeah. like kill that card, like destroy asset, right, or flip yeah. that asset. It, like that's yeah. the sort of thing. Like you can't just have like. Um, like pity for a trader is good, you know, you seal it. Yeah, you but dude, like, you were slamming what is it, World of Endines in yeah, your Yeah, World deck? of Endines. It's just yeah, commit, destroy it. target asset, right? Um uh but like like if you're playing a water deck, you need to find answers for 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 assets, right? Like it's just like it's a no brainer deck. to me. Like you need yeah, a, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say that. I'll say that. But one of the biggest draws for me about the all for all symbol is hacker extraordinaire. Like hacker extraordinaire says stop playing assets and also forces yeah, deadlock, right? It also draws um, you a card, and it draws you a card. Play well, committed, gets you momentum. You thought, you thought, you thought that um, that squirrel was too good, dude. That card gets you momentum every time, dude. You're <laughs> sure, always dude. taking five you, attacks. Yeah, you said to take five <laughs> damage because people don't block anymore anyway. You got, you got juicy <laughs> life totals, man. You're exactly, fine. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, but I, 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 I do think that 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 it, they just gotta be playing like answers to things, like like West Wind combo. In those water decks, should be there. I think I think the cut was running that card, so that team uh, William Anderson probably had them. But like, maybe main and side copies of West Wind because that forces a block. Because if it deals any yeah. damage, you get to destroy their asset, right? Um, I guess uh, I'm just really surprised that there there wasn't more. You know, like yeah. I know I know Kevin Roberg right is is changed mm -hmm. uh, and was changed for the event. But like, it's so crazy to me that you wouldn't just have some form of asset hate somewhere in your deck 
You know, that just kind of like blows my mind because Cassandra's not going anywhere, guys. <laughs> yeah. I So I think the answer to beating Cassandra is playing her game better than her, right? Sure. Uh, threatening her early is like on her first, if you go first, right? Cassandra typically will hard mulligan for Owl Shield, which means she's building usually at max three foundations, right? So she'll have like two, three foundations and an asset or two, um, which means it's, it's tough for her to block on those early turns, right? And if you are able to deal with her asset on that first turn, she's very vulnerable. Um, and when it gets to the later in the game, taking advantage of her of her like grindy play style, you know exactly what's going to be happening. It means that you can sculpt very, very effectively. Um, you know, if I, I my plan for dealing with Cassandra in my game was just to, you know, mill out her her, her key options and then use rhythmic fighting styles to to not die to throws. But like having answers sure. to throws is something that every deck should, especially if you're a seven hander, they should have. Right? You just gotta. Um, uh, throws are, are are too good at killing seven handers. Right? Um, I know that like one of the things that really frustrated me playing seven hand size was playing with the nightmares who just yeeted. Uh, Izuna drops, right? Because Izuna oh, drop absolutely. is like the least interactive throw. It's just like, here's this 3 8 Take this 3 8 you know? Yeah. Um, so, um, you gotta have throw hate, and you gotta be able to, to, to like, crack the wall. Um, whether, sure. whether it be through hand taxing, right? Because that's, that's the thing you can do. If you can, if you can deal with her Cormorant and her Elk Shield on the board, right? Via asset hate, um, then she has to actually use her hand to block, um, and and that's scary for Cassandra, who typically likes to like hold on to two. Um, sure. Uh, and 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 then like big fast attacks after you, you know, if you can deal with with Baker. I mean, I know this sounds like like a scenario, like oh my god, how am I supposed to ever deal with this? But um, right. that's the reason why I was playing Yoshi. I feel very confident about the Yoshi and the Cassandra matchup. I I don't think that Cassandra can 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 kill through through the giant health total and also deleting of her discard pile. I mean, you know, when I played Mike Lowe, and Mike Lowe's a really good player. I mean, guy was on... on he's all right. <laughs> he's a good player. He's a good player. Mike Mike, Mike is... No matter how Mike... Mike will blame every time he loses on some misplay, but I'm here like, I don't know what you misplayed. I think I just had just had the, the cards, right? Second second place um, world's uh, team's Mike Lowe, by the way. Yeah. I mean, saw, and he's been playing Cassandra all year. He's a very, he's, he's He knows how the character yeah. plays. Um, but, like, you can ask him. He didn't really have any play into the deck. Uh, uh, same with, like, if you're playing, like, Jose's Kuwabara did really well into the deck, I think. I think they went to three games, and Tyner just, like, like he was like, oh, well, I have six attacks, um, and I stopped you last turn. Like, that's how he killed him in the second, third game. Yeah. He had to stop and then drip into a huge attack hand, and he, and he got to kill kill him, you know? Um, but if he didn't have the stops, like, those attacks don't do very much damage um uh uh so and and so like answering her assets is really really choice pressuring her early um uh uh pressuring her 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 already said pressuring her assets but pressuring her assets is the biggest thing just play asset hate sure. man just play fucking asset hate and and play better than mark tyner which is hard i do i i do have just one addendum to this just because mm -hmm. like you're like all right i'm Play all these good cards, and the the one com like the one factor that all these cards have is the reusable cards are all on all. Okay. Everybody else, and it's not like to say that you're doing it wrong because you're playing reusable cards. Oh. I'm just saying like everybody else is like at, uh, asset or throw hate is one off. Okay. Like uh, around, all awakening. Yeah, all has a very good like. Yeah. Reusable I mean, that's, game. That's the reason I'm on that symbol. I yeah, hate all. all I hate is I hate the very all symbol. good. Yeah, yeah. I, I really hate the all symbol. Uh, so I think it's, it, the, it's the it's the least identifiable symbol. It's just draw cards, right? Its identity is do everything. It's yeah, the all symbol. All Bromley, duh. Well, but I'm just <laughs> like I really dislike the all symbol, but I'm playing it because it has the it, it answers the questions that I'm positing, right? So yeah. like like you're just yeah. you're just reinforcing my my. No, I'm a guy. I'm agreeing <laughs> with you. I'm just like that, like. I guess my my more my point was trying to be like, don't be discouraged if you can't find like rhythmic fighting style or hacker in your decks because there are sure. you're still going to be able to you're, you're not going to always need to do these things you're going to have to negate or change like you're gonna have to stop key moments in the game right yeah yeah every game of ufs has to be like key moments of the game have to be stopped um there you're not winning every game because you're able to rhythmic fighting style five out of five throws in a turn right like your, your rhythmic fighting style their best card your rhythmic realistically you're, you're you're having rhythmic fighting style on the board means they can never attack you with angel discus step one that's really good uh but 
you're going to stop one card a turn realistically or two, like depending on how many copies you have out. But you're not going to like just fucking shit on their whole like turn with it. It's just like a matter of you have to have your, your specific answers. So if you're one copy of Kieran Soul on board, mm-hmm. isn't getting as much value as their throw you're negating, like it's a waste. You have to play smart. Like you have to actually use like the timings uh, of the game to 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 really read the situation. You can't hey, just blow use your noodle, your load. dude. Use your noodle. You you can't blow your load because like if you're playing out where there is to answer assets, which chaos has to do, because uh, chaos sucks. Uh, you can't just be like, all right, well, I got this out. I'm gonna pay one life to put your uh, owl shield back in there. They're just gonna play it again. It's a one diff, mm-hmm. right? Like you have to. There has to be purpose to your to your movement, you know? There mm-hmm. has to be purpose. If you, you do at the right yeah. moment, for sure. Yeah. Speaking of, of the of right moment, kind of stuff. this is the right moment to talk about the greatest deck ever assembled. All right? I want to I wanna paint you a picture, okay? I'm listening. You're playing Hiei, okay? Okay. You're playing oh. Squirrel. Is this the f- I'm going to... F- okay, never mind. It's this a isn't fire the- deck. I'm not going to have a stroke. All right. You're going to have a stroke. You're definitely going to have a stroke. You play oh, Fooled God. by the Master, okay? Because Fooled by the Master lets you combo twice. You play every stun card in the format, and then you play a Burst Time. And then you Burst Time, combo, get three momentum. Discard momentum, Fooled by, by a Master, get three more momentum. You're Hiei. You do this all all four times because you picked up all four copies of Fooled by the Master, right? So you netted three, five, seven, nine. 11 momentum, right? You have an 11 card hand. There's no way anybody ever kills you. Just say it, dude. Think about it. I seriously thought this was going to go into the fucking fever dream that Sam pitched in the Discord the other day. No, 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 no. no. This uninteractive fucking fatality combo. And my whole, the whole time I'm reading, I'm like, doesn't Takeda just do this with six less steps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but Takeda's cheating, dude. That's why we're playing Hiei. Takeda could also have the unlimited momentum thing. But, oh but, my god, these are just so many additional stats. No, I actually want, I actually want to, um, I want, I want people to, to put some respect on Ihie, because think about, like, like, the the other side of this is you play 4x four Flame Aura, right? And you sure. attack with it, right? And it's 7 speed because you're Ihie. Who's blocking that Flame Aura, right? Like, you're, that's an actual situation that nobody's, that nobody's been doing that, right? Like, so you block, you attack with this Flame Aura, it goes to your momentum, right? So you get to block with it next turn, right? Um, you get to play three eyes of EA because you're EA, dude. Of course, you play your own card. Yeah, you gotta play your own card. <laughs> you gotta play your own card. You're blocking from momentum with Flame Aura, right? It, it's just, it's just free real estate, dude. It's free real you know, estate. <laughs> you've cracked the code on how Fire can win a tournament. Hey, you play hey. EA and you don't play any aggro cards. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. You end up with eleven momentum, and then you can kill Cassandra because you play Firefly Gunner. Because after you have eleven momentum, there's no way there's not a Firefly Gunner in there. You burn them for twelve, baby. Burn them for twelve. I mean that is the that is a deck that you have probably built on tabletop. Simulator. I'm just saying, dude, it's gotta be nuts. I, I think I think that fire has some really cool play at this point. Actually, I think that it has some really sure. cool stuff. Um, and defensively, it's just really tough because it's unlike other symbols that their speed hate and their their dr and all their good stuff is like really really reusable. Fire's like, well, all I've got are these big shots. And I really want to use them offensively, but it's a trap. You actually have to keep your big shots for defense. That's what you need them for. You need them for defense. Don't use them offensively unless it's a guaranteed kill. Your only defense is hoping to God that your opponent can't negate big shots with one of the 700 cards in the game. That's (laughs) that's fine. They can negate it, and then you block with a flame R. Like, I mean, flame R blocks nuts, dude. Flame R and flock is so insane. That's true. That's true. It's so good. I think fire (laughs) is pretty dog water, but it's okay. It's bad. It's bad. You know, uh, but if I can pilot a Bakugo deck to 3-3 and at a very super serious standard event... Like you can take an actual character on the five symbol and a fire symbol and do some good shit. I think it's it's uh, it's very telling how bad that symbol is when like its best character is Ken two, which is nuts, right? Mm-hmm. And Ken two doesn't do anything. Ken two <laughs> is top sixteen master, right? Like sure, he, he top there, like he then... top you top sixteen and then you lose in the top first round of top cuts. Like that's, right. that is Ken two in a nutshell. He's reptile tier, dude. Ooh. 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 Reptile reptiles suck. Well, the problem the problem with fire symbol in general is like we said it earlier, it's just like the high roll thing, right? Where like the Kung Jin fire decks, the Nightmare fire decks. Not that anybody's playing Nightmare on Fire, but you know, 
they're just trying to to actually sack right the hellfire yeah. bailment sort of decks like my favorite thing playing the hellfire bailment decks is when they try to attack you and they check it too and they're like Did this happen <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe yeah, you, you beat me because I checked bad. No, I beat you because you attacked with no foundations and you checked it too because you play 70 of them. It's like you put that card in the deck, dude. You, you knew it was dude. there. I, I have also played Hellfire Pelman decks, but I plan around what I'm about to check. Yeah. I know if I'm going to check a one. If I check a six, yeah. I'm like, wow, dude, I'm the greatest player alive. Yeah. I was planning I to check a two there. You just got to assume you're always going to check a two, of dude. Course, if you're always yeah. going to check a two, you're prepared for it mentally. <laughs> it's just, I've, it's I've just... lived a long, illustrious career of playing Coffee Samba. <laughs> I know just... when I'm going to check them. It's, I'm aware when they're going to get checked. It's just so funny to me that, like, the fire, the, the fire, like, that's like the fire mentality is like, I can't believe I checked so poorly. This I can't. Game. How did this happen to me? <laughs> this, but what? I want to posit an alternate universe, an alternate, alternate thinking mode for fire which is that you can play margin defense i'm gonna call it margin defense like knife's edge defense where you're like teetering the entire time but if you play sure. it right oh man it feels so good uh i mean i i think play more at three eyes of he is an absolute blowout it's good dude it's good shit. especially especially and, if you can loop it up yeah and you can you, you have access to probably the most degenerate two card combo in the format which is kieran soul and black bear diner that's really good. That's, that's really good. That's like, that's like rhythmic fighting style, guys. We were just yeah. talking about how good yeah. that is. Yeah, but rhythmic, rhythmic is like you have to block it with the right zone. Karen Soul's just like whatever, dude. Karen Soul's just like block it with that flame yeah. war, dude. We know you've got it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it anyway. All yeah. right, all right. I'll give you, I'll give that one to you. Fire does have some kind of good. It's fire does have defensive cards in it. it. Can't, you, I will give you, you, you to, that one. You have to sell out for it. I'm just trying to find the right thing. I do have a Tegeta deck that's doing something I feel like similar, it's but just like. Salinka, because she can actually play a game. Salinka is definitely actually good. I think she's probably the best fire character that's not trying to play like fire. You could Salinka's actually good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I, yeah. You, I could see if you if somebody put a Salinka fire deck in front of me and did all these things, I would be impressed. I'd be like, whoa. No, I'm the, never going but, to kill you. But the meme is you're Hie, so you have a 13 card hand. I'm just yeah, like, like, come I on. Think the coolest character idea and sucks so bad. Ah, <laughs> uh, but that's because he's he has zero defense, right? Right? Am I right? I just think he just doesn't do anything. But I well, guess like he does kind of. He, he has I don't know. he has zero defense, right? On his face, he's got zero defense because he's because he's got this huge hand, right? He's just got so much. But like that's what I'm saying is if you can if you can get the wombo and you get a hundred cards in your momentum, you just you block everything forever now. What if we just mill people with him, right? You get to play Fatality every turn. <laughs> he can play Hell's Vortex <laughs> off of fire. I'm pretty sure he can Manji Ninjutsu is off of a, one of his symbols. Is there a card? Uh, that... He can play Koenma's Task, I think. I don't even know, man. No, I don't know what he his fucking symbols are. He can't. There's no way. Oh, it's Chaos, Void, and Fire. Yeah, he can't. But he can play Manji. He can play Manji and Evil Bow. Off symbol. And fatality. <laughs> and fatality. You know, and he can play Hell's Vortex. This is a three symbol deck, baby. This sounds like <laughs> the Bison 2 deck, and if you recall, the Bison 2 deck was so bad because it just didn't have enough cards in hand, right? But Hiei... Hiei has all the cards he in has hand. has all the cards in his hand because his entire momentum is his hand, Phil. <laughs> Listen, if we're building Mill Hiei, I'm almost more on board than trying to play Firefly Gunner Hiei, all right? All right, all right, all right. Um... Uh, other than bullshitting and waxing poag about terrible, terrible decks or really good decks, uh, there is a playtest tournament coming up, actually, guys. Uh, True. Just as a final note, uh, before we probably get really into it next week, uh, the 20th, there is a playtest tournament uh, put on by Final Round Games. Uh, Jacob Masser and his store mm -hmm. are putting on a uh, tabletop simulator playtest My Hero uh tournament uh in quotes because uh officially you guys will be beating each other up with food groups yes <laughs> officially yeah it's not you'll be Nomu sandwiches versus all might it's chi burger yeah versus keto man yes mm -hmm. yes yes absolutely yeah. uh but uh as far as i know it is pretty much like a Every entry throws packs into the pot type situation, and uh, the winner is going to end up with 
the all uh, my bunch of my hero academia product uh including quirk packs uh stuff like that and there's also gonna be cool raffles uh auctioning off stuff i believe there's a uh, gen con promo all might somewhere in there i think uh, that's but, the i think that's the, the grand prize actually is the all might promo uh i I think the grand prize is is like a. I think they're trying to do something like the TTS one, where it's like a, a lot of product. I don't know. Don't quote me. That's sure. the last thing I heard. I don't. I yeah, don't... I'm not entirely sure either. I just watched Tam's two minute video about it uh, hmm. over at Tam Cardwell on YouTube, um, and I wasn't paying that much attention, but it did have really upbeat music. So true. Tam I will be attempting to commentate that. I think. Though I should probably read the playtest cards first, so I know what's going on. That's what um, we'll do, dude. We'll do a stream where we talk about all the playtest cards. Like Baby th- Trinity Geyser, the best card in that format. I do think it is, um, It is as far as I know, it's demo decks and playtest up only. Like the My Hero Gen Con promos, or Gen Con decks, yeah, and no then standard, also My Hero. No and then playtest stuff. No standard cards. Yeah, so right. it should be cool. Uh, it should be fun. Uh, hoping to get a little bit of exposure to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Jacob is a great guy for putting on an event for the folks in the meantime, while Jasco is probably setting up a nice little fun event for next month, I hope. Hopefully, dude. Hopefully. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, anyways, that's really all we got besides shilling. Uh, subscribe to our Patreon. Subscribe to our YouTube. And Make Twitch. sure you like this video. Unfun stuff on Twitch. You got an extra Prime sub. Go check that Prime button. Yeah. Send it over to Unfun Stuff. Yeah, leave a comment. Uh, Comment on our video. Yeah. Uh, just hit us with whatever, man. Uh, we are fairly active in responses. Uh, at least one of us will usually see the response and hit a hit a little retort to it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we try our best to respond to this stuff. If you have good ideas for things, uh, let us know. Other yeah. than that, uh, yeah, that's. I think that's all we got for this week. That's it. Happy uh, Valentine's Day, guys. Oh, the nineteenth yeah. uh, is my birthday, so. Uh... Happy Valentine's Day. Happy. Almost Bromley birthday. Yeah, it's it's almost Bromley day, boys. Happy almost Bromley day. Yeah. Enjoy uh, enjoy yourselves, folks. We'll be back. Poo.